Hey, what is going on guys? This is SMBB Reviews and today we are doing something very special. We're actually interviewing a band from around Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, their name is Lilac Kings and they're an incredible band, one I've seen multiple times live. They're really good and I really do recommend them. They have an album coming out soon which I will link down in the description once it does come out. Until then I will link the lead single, Don't Pretend, which we do discuss in this interview. Definitely worth your time. Uh, yeah, we talk about the upcoming album, uh, their songwriting process, and just their history as a band. So it's something very interesting. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm so Okay, um, just start off, uh, tell me your names, where you're from, instruments you play, just very simple stuff like that. Oh. I'm Skyler, I play guitar. I'm Nate, I play bass. Camera, I play drums. Dylan, I play guitar. Okay, uh, where, I mean obviously you're from around here, are y'all from Tulsa, where are you exactly? Well, we're, us three live in Oklahoma City right now. Okay. I live in Brooklyn. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so, how did you uh, guys get together, especially with the distance? I mean, what? How, how did this band come together? So, the way that we met Dylan was <laughs> soccer. Back when we were kids, uh, we started playing soccer with Dylan, and then when he moved up to Tulsa, um, he came through Oklahoma City, and we found out that he played guitar or whatever, and we were all relatively young, and we decided to start a really bad metal band, um, which eventually turned into something decent, but that all kind of disbanded, and then uh, through like a series of events, us three ended up kind of being back in a band together after a few years, and then uh, as far as Nate goes, I mean, I wasn't he was, there for that, but... He was technically... So the metalcore band was called Earth Falls Before Me, and we lost the vocalist and we lost the band, we lost the bass player. Well, we lost Skylar as the guitarist, and so our bass player became the guitarist. We looked for him to be the bass player. So technically, all four of us were in that metal band together at some point. And as that was happening, I was doing, I was just writing stuff on the side, and then doing it out. Decided to go ahead and try to make a side project, but when the metalcore band fell apart, we started pursuing that. Um, and it's just like my name is going out there. And it came around. So, okay, so I need, I need a musician. <laughs> so we've talked about a lot of bands. How many? Have, how many? No matter how professional they were, how many bands have we? Each been? Uh, me and Cameron have been in pretty much every band together because we're brothers, so. Uh, and that would have been one, two, three, four, five. This will be the sixth band. Okay. Sixth attempt at trying to play music. <laughs> gotcha. Um, I think I'm the oldest, and I've, I've been playing for about 15 years. Um, so I've been in just countless bands. I can't even. I couldn't even tell you how many, but a lot. Yeah. I think this was my fourth. Okay. Um, so what? Uh, what was the actual age of? I know we talked about the metal band. What was the actual age of this guy within a band? In that band or, or in the first band? First band. Okay. I was probably. <laughs> we started pretty young too. I was probably about fourteen in my first band or so. Uh, Thirteen in my first. Yeah, same here. So, what got you started in music? I mean, what what was the driving factor to start a band? Like mm, I know for me, I kind of came up during like uh, like when post hardcore was really getting popular. Um, around like probably like from like 2006 to eight ish, um, and that's when like. Um, I don't know, like all the bands were like World Tour was really big and stuff like that, and that's what got me wanting to play. So I just I really like that music, and I wanted to, you know, be in a band like that. From my perspective, I feel like uh, I wanted to get into music because I always had like a desire for it, but I really wanted to play drums at the time, and Cameron really wanted to play guitar, 
and we both tried to learn those instruments. It was and, my first uh, instrument with my guitar. Yeah, we both tried to learn those instruments and found out that we were both terrible at those, so we decided to switch, and then it, it kind of worked out from there. So. Oh, I didn't know. That. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember the first guitar I had too, was a Maestro by Gibson. I, just, I started playing pretty young. I guess started playing when I was nine. I grew up in a smaller town, um, and I was into kind of the same music, like most sorts of music, you know. And no one around there was. And I just kind of grew up playing, learning songs and playing along with the with the songs for my guitar. And, Band was a, finding a band was an outlet. It was never really anything I wanted to be in until I finally it. So is this, I mean obviously you all are passionate about music, but is this, assuming it was something that blew up, something that you want to do full time? Um, I know like you have a family, so uh, I, is this something that you guys would be in? If it was a big band, would you do it full time? Yeah, definitely. So we uh, we've talked about post hardcore, but what specific bands are big influences? I think we can all agree on Dance Gavin Dance. That's probably our favorite collectively. Yeah, anytime I've showed anyone, you guys, they all go, "Wow, oh, this is a lot like Dance Gavin Dance." So. <laughs> I would yeah, say so. a lot like Birds is a close second for, for me, probably for these guys too. So. Gotcha. Um, uh, okay, so let's move into more uh, your songwriting process. So what is your songwriting process? How do you guys collaborate, especially since there is a distance? So Dylan writes predominantly everything, um, which is fine because we all kind of assume specific roles in the band, and it just kind of functions that way. I think one of the biggest things we found like was disconnecting when we were all playing in a band before was too many cooks, I guess, so, like so to say. So um, definitely with Dylan starting this project, he kind of just has like that vision in mind that kind of all goes and we all contribute and everything. And, and I would say like the majority of the ideas start from, from Dylan and then at that point, you know, our collaboration kind of comes in after that as far as the songwriting process goes. And, and we all kind of contribute as a whole and we try to make it what the band is as a whole, but it all is transformed. Right. Um, uh, okay, so we, uh, you currently have one album EP out, um, and uh, we have another one on the way. Of what we have, uh, including the new music, what is you guys' favorite songs from your discography? Including the music that's not released? Yes. Okay. Man, my favorite song so far is probably Atrophy. It's going to be a song on the new album. Um, that one, I'm really excited for everybody to hear, but for the most part, I think that I personally am happy with a lot of the music that we write, and I think one thing that makes it great about us being in a band is like, it's great that other people like it, but it really starts with us enjoying it first for the most part. From at least my standpoint, I feel like we enjoy a lot of the songs that we've we've done and put together. But my favorite is probably two BC. Really weird one that doesn't fit. Yeah, it's a little bit different. It's very different. I like it. It's cool. Yeah. That's probably why I like it. Yeah. My close ones are probably measure for measure. Um, we are very into our music, but we all think it's good. <laughs> so, uh, I'm glad you think it's a step up at least. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really like Drive Me Home. Um, because it has this cool little funky part in it, which is kind of different from what we do, and I really like that. And also the lyrics are really cool too, because it's like, uh, I'm going out tonight, I'm going to pick a fight, if you ever look at her in the wrong kind of light. It's cool, it just paints like this cool image, I think. Yeah. Like, that's why, yeah, it's, fun. it's my favorite. Yeah, well, I'm glad that this album you guys are, are excited about. Do you feel... There have been any missteps at all? I mean, we don't have much discography to talk about, but do you feel there's a misstep in, um, in it? As far as like a like a song you're proud of, yeah, like yeah, anything, anything you feel just doesn't quite fit. You know, I think 
from our perspective, like the metal band in a way, as much as we had fun with it, was our misstep. So like at this point coming into the band, especially when I basically rejoined, started playing with them, I think that the conversations that we had to to probably start this band and continue to move it on the path forward is discussing all those past mistakes that we've made in previous bands so that we feel like we have a better grasp. I personally don't feel like there's necessarily been a misstep with Lilac so far, hopefully, but I mean obviously we'll have to see how what other people think once the good nights release. Right. But, the chemistry here has been really good, surprisingly. Like it has been everything very yeah, there have not been very many um, things, trials ever so so everything has been really good. Good. Um, how, how? When did you guys actually get together? I know we had the uh, album out in like late 2017. When did you guys actually start? Underline Lion King. So basically, the first song was recorded in late December, released in January. It was just me and Blaine. We played our first show in April. I believe. Yeah, April 21st, 2017. Anthony Castleberry, Daniel Anthony Castleberry played drums for us. He also actually tried drums for us. Um, knowing that he would just be temporary. Um, and then we got Cameron to come in about May. Around May he started practicing and rehearsing with us. Um, and then that remained Blaine, me, Cameron remained the lineup for about until about December. So December is when we started bringing Mate in. Um, he played his first show in January. And Blaine left in uh, May or June. Yeah, yeah, because you played our first show That's with us right. in Bartlesville. Yeah. So, yeah. so here we are. Um, so, uh, to mention at least one of my favorites from what we have out, obviously after the album, but uh, tell me a little bit about the dreaming. That's my favorite song. For when you're dreaming is basically about someone who is lethargic, basically. And so let's start towards the beginning. Um, first verse is essentially like roll out of your bed, um, you know, put on your dancing shoes. Let's go. Let's go out and have fun. Um, basically, overcoming that feeling of depression and uh, desperate disparity. Um, and, chorus and like the, the main ethos of the song is about following your dreams, like you know, despite hardships, despite um, hard times, you know, um, what is it that gives us fuel to go on, to, to live life without taking chances is pretty sad. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's basically a good, positive um, reminder that um, even though things get hard, even though you know, we um, don't want to give up sometimes, it's, it's good to know. So was there specific uh, the catalyst for this song or any process? Um, for this one, for this one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a personal uh, look at here. You know, there's times when you get you feel down, but like, okay, this music thing isn't working out. What's the next step? What point should I just give up instead? You know, but Dave, if you have more, if you have more to give. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, you guys put on an incredible live show. I've always been super, uh, super enjoyed your live show. Do you? actually really enjoy the live show because there's some bands that just do it because that's there's more money in live shows and just to get your name out there is this something you actually enjoy doing yeah. um, absolutely that's like the best part about it probably it's just like there's a the atmosphere and the vibe and everything I think that's why we do all the music is just to share it with other people and, and play the live show honestly so um, now let's move into the upcoming album. So we got the lead single, Don't Pretend. Um, tell me a little bit about Don't Pretend. Don't Pretend is a, so basically these days there's a whole lot of people that like to put up this facade of, oh, you know, I'm, I'm um, mentally 
smaller and you're basically yeah. right. Yeah. Like like saying like okay, no, I have anxiety and I have this and that. And they use it as a sense of um, kind of like a fashion statement. Um, it's like okay, this is gonna give me some attention. Or they're seeking attention or something like that. Um, and what that does is it takes away the importance of the, the attention needed to other people that actually have those issues. Um, and most time, most in most cases, people that have those problems are not comfortable talking there. And so when you have these people shouting, they have these issues. People that actually do have the problems. They go out of this, um, and that's that's basically what it's about. There's people out there that would kill to have the ability to pretend to be safe, right? So it actually is. So I do know uh, from posts on Facebook that uh, the the shooting process for the music video had some interesting uh, turns on it. Tell me a little bit about that specifically. Then we go into this. Uh, we basically got an Airbnb house. <laughs> <laughs> um, We walk to, uh, we have the producer, and she's kind of, the lady that owns the house is kind of like, well, can y'all shoot it in the backyard? And we're like, no, um, no, it's not really going to work out, lighting-wise. Uh, she's like, okay, well, you guys can do it. I'll just, I don't think she realized how serious they were. So she ended up being cool with it, because we thought she was going to have an issue with it. She ended up being cool with it, she's like, alright, fine, y'all do what you need to do, I'll leave the house. Cool. Um, so we shot in the living room. She had tons of knickknacks just everywhere. Like, window sills and edges. And you know, it's the floor is wooden. There's a crawl space underneath. So Cameron playing drums. There's going to be vibrations. Yeah, so there were tons of pictures. I mean, we probably moved hundreds of items. We took it all to the dining room and set it on the table. We had taken pictures of everything so we could put it back to where it was. Yeah. Yeah. It ended up working out. I was so, so stoked. I was so scared to get out of the I think she was too. <laughs> she was a little nervous. The other cool thing was the random peacock. Outside. Yeah. Outside. I think it was in the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we would randomly see it, but a lot of times we would hear it. It would move around too. Like it would be north, south. Like it would just kind of like yeah, circle, around. circle around the whole property. <laughs> like a guard dog. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so we do have the upcoming album uh, coming out. Tell me anything you want about it, release dates, a anything you want to get out. Early access is New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. So Basically, what we're going to try to, we're going to have physical copies on the New Year's Eve show. Um, and I'm willing to like send people wave files. But I should access is New Year's Eve. So if you want the album before it comes out, it'll be on New Year's Eve at the live show, physical copies only. And uh, tentative release date is January. It's tentative. Um, a lot of that has to do with the red tape and things. Releasing an album early January is difficult. I didn't know that until. And from what I hear is that it's something that is universal, which I'm really used to. So always renewing their contracts at the end of the year for distribution and such. So releasing it on January 4th, it seemed like a good idea. Now it's time. So, so yeah. Okay. We're just really excited to get it out at the beginning of the year. So 2019 off, right, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and then to wrap things up, uh, I want everyone's favorite line from the album, if you have one favorite lyric from the album. I mean, Mate uh, talked about one earlier. Yeah, that's probably my favorite, that I'm going out tonight, I'm going to pick up fight. If you ever look at her in the wrong kind of light. I just like that thematically. Yeah. It's really cool. We have a Carl Sagan quote. Hands make the warmth feel better. Hard times means you gotta be clever. Black and white, imagine well, actually, life. Actually, imagine life all Imagine Life lyrics are pretty awesome. Yeah. Now that they say it, yeah. That was pretty good. Yeah. So, Ooh, do we have the, um, um, I think so. I think it's a good line. And I didn't even write that one. Who did write this one? Luke Ning. He's in a band called Logan and Hiatus. 
Yeah. And he has a feature on that. Speaking of which, when does our split come out? Oh, this, this month? This month? Yeah. So basically, we'll have a single come out that's paired. Like, okay, we have a. Luke Nagel is in a band called Logan Hyatt. This is a split release with Logan Hyatt and Lilac Kings. Our song Imagine Life Without Color will be on it, featuring Luke from Logan and Hayes. And then their song Old Light will be coming out, and I'll be featured on that one too. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for being with me. Thanks for having me.